the rigors and dangers of their everyday lives, coupled with the constant state of intoxication, meant that the average Elizabethan lived life for the moment. They loved any form of entertainment, but if life in the present grew too arduous, they could always attend a play and be taken back to a bygone age or spirited away to a far-off land. In 1576, James Burbage, a carpenter turned actor and Bessario, had revolutionized the leisure time of Londoners by establishing a new form of theater. His son, Richard Burbage, was destined to become one of the greatest actors in the early days of the English Playhouse. And it would be from his lips that audiences would first hear spoken many of William Shakespeare's most immortal words and memorable lines. The two would in time become great friends. That Richard admired and respected William's work is aptly demonstrated by the fact he chose to name his daughter Juliet. Good pilgrim. You do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips, and holy palms too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, who grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. For the first time in English history, the play actors, whom the authorities considered to be a rough and unsavory bunch, did not need to take their plays to the audience, but rather the audience came to the plays. It must be remembered that up until this time, an actor's life had consisted largely of traveling the country, performing with their troupe or company in private houses, inns or courtyards. It was a hand-to-mouth, precarious existence. The authorities tended to see these acting troops as little more than rogues who were duly persecuted. The only way they could avoid arrest was to place themselves under the patronage of a powerful nobleman or aristocrat. James Burbage's company were the Earl of Leicester's men, and it was they who had the distinction of being the first to perform at their very own stationary playhouse. It was a popular idea. It caught on, and soon Burbage's playhouse, known simply as The Theatre, had competition, most notably from a playhouse built on the south side of the Thames by Philip Henslow, which he named The Rose. And thus, by the late 1580s, the acting profession had settled into a remote semblance of stability, and the citizens of London had an ever-expanding choice of entertainments. 